tone, please state your name followed by the pound sign. But then we need to do this for uh, hundreds of objects. So currently, we, uh, in the regular paradigm, we are looking at creating uh, actually hundreds of uh, mappings um, and uh, actually maintaining them and running them. So that's where uh, the uh, dynamic um, mapping um, concept uh, comes in, where we will be able to uh, parameterize just not only the uh, source and targets, but also the, uh, it's, uh, the mapping logic is dynamic in terms of the source fields and the target fields. The data or the fields flows from the source to transformation and transformation to the target. That also can be dynamically be adjusted by parameterizing the link rules. And then last but not the least, we will also be able to parameter <coughs> sorry, parameterize the type of transformations, uh, dynamically adjust the transformations that are added in the expressions. So for example, do you want to trim the string fields? If in one table we get five string fields, and then in another table we get 10 string fields, based on the number of fields that come in, string fields come from the source, as many transformation ports will dynamically be added. So this is the beauty of this dynamic mapping functionality where we are not only parameterizing the, just the source and targets, but also the ports, how the ports propagate from source to target, and also the different type of expressions that are added in the transformation. So it uh, provides a massive productivity gain for example, if we look at a scenario where in a retail, uh, say consumer retail, where uh, 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 say an organization has thousands of retail stores, where on a daily basis or even hourly, if they are getting uh, data dumps from the stores, which need to be loaded into the um, uh, central operation data store. so. You can imagine that maintaining a, uh, when we are just simply doing, uh, creating a ODS with the data coming from the store, um, it's uh, easy to handle it if a dynamic mapping can actually handle any of those feeds which are coming from different uh, stores and also be dynamic in terms of if they if they added a column or if they removed a column, the data integration does not break because what we are simply doing is dynamically just read it and then do minimal transformations and then load it into the into an ODS so that the next level of process can take over. So you can see the level of productivity that uh, this can offer. So definitely this is, uh, you know, we, we, we've got some uh, good uh, feedback in terms of the usability. Uh, in terms of how much of productivity gain this can offer. And uh, um, from a, a, a use case perspective, this is something uh, which is uh, very relevant when we are do, doing mass ingestion of data into an ODS with some minimal transformations. And when we are, this may not be appropriate when we are looking at very heavy uh, transformations uh, with very complexities involved, uh, there it may um, uh, it may not be an ideal uh, use case. But uh, then the mass ingestion use case uh, with uh, um, somewhat uh, typical data transformations is uh, kind of uh, very suitable in this case. So now we will uh, turn uh, turn this over to Teja for the demo. I will make her the presenter. Um, uh, Patabi, can you make uh, Tejas the uh, Tejas me the presenter? Oh. 
Uh, Tejashwini, you may need to do star six to unmute yourself. Thanks, Raj. Uh, hello, all. This is Teja. Can you hear my uh, voice properly and see the screen? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. So I am a free sales support engineer from Informatica, and I will be walking you through the dynamic mapping demo. So before getting into the demo, I just wanted to give a little uh, background. I have taken a scenario here where I am a developer and I receive multiple files every day and I need to clean those files to remove my spaces, blank spaces, beginning and ending of the string values. So the data files also have several different column names and multiple column types like string, double, date, time, but what I am planning to do is just trim the spaces in my string type columns. And without having to create a mapping for each different source, I since I receive many sources every day, so without having to create a different mapping for each different source to accommodate these changes, I need to create a dynamic mapping. So I'll quickly go ahead and create a new mapping and name it as M underscore webinar. So the first thing I would want to do is pull in the customer data, which is my first source. And under properties, I want to go to the data object and select either value or parameter. So what this is saying is if you want to use the only fixed values of the current source, or if you want to parameterize, I'm sorry, parameterize it to change the values. Since I am planning to create one generic mapping and select many sources so that um, you don't have to create a mapping again and again, I'm going to use parameter. And the next thing I want to select is at runtime, get data object columns from data source. And what this is doing is it's turning on the dynamic schema, which is saying that I don't want to be bound by the metadata definition that's only available at the design time. And I am creating a new parameter. Let's name it param source and select our source as the customer data. So let's save this before moving on to the next step. I want to run the data viewer and look at the different columns and the data I am pulling in. And you can see we have several spaces in my data which looks really bad, which has to be clean. So let's quickly create an expression transformation in order to trim our, uh, the spaces for the string type columns. So what I'm going to do is bring all the ports from my source to the expression transformation and then edit my input rules. So you see here we have several types of data that is double string date time, Etc. But since I am trying to just uh, remove the spaces in my string values, I am going to include it by type and change it to string. And now you see, you don't see all the columns, but just the columns which has the type as string. So let's click OK. And going back to the properties and ports, so I'm going to make this as just the input port. And now I'll be creating a new dynamic port here, which will be just the output port. And give the expression for it, that is uh, to trim the spaces, that is I'm using L trim, R trim of the source. 
and I'm going to select my base port as the read customer. Uh, that is my source, that is customer data. And I can also edit my output port settings. You can use uh, a suffix so that the output field can come out with a suffix saying out. And you can also specify any custom settings in this option. So let's validate this expression and click OK. And the next thing I want to do is create a new static port where I want to define my last modified date. So let's name it as last modified date and make it as date type type. And I'll give this timestamp as my expression here. It's valid. Let's click OK. So we have brought in all the string type value columns and we have uh, eliminated all the spaces by giving an expression that is L trim, R trim, and we have also provided the last modified date. And finally, the final step I want to do here is to bring all the remaining ports that didn't have string type as the type of the column. So I'm going to create a Oh, I'm sorry. So let's bring all the ports again to our expression transformation and click on the edit input rules again. So what I'm going to do is check this include all remaining ports option, which brings the double and date and time values. Let's hit OK. I'm going to save this, and you can also run the data viewer here to check what values you have modified and what uh, if you have removed the spaces or not, which is a great advantage here. And finally, I want to write all this to a target. So let's quickly create a physical data object and create a flat file. Let's create as an empty flat file because now I have taken my customer as the source, but since I'll be receiving multiple source, I want to create it as an empty file so that it can take all the new values, all the modified values every time. I am going to name it as Let's hit finish. So under the properties of my target and under the advanced properties, you could see that you could not only parameterize the output uh, file uh, location, the directory, but also the name of the file. So let's give our target location here. I'll just save it on my desktop. So let's save it, and now let's bring that flat file object to our workspace. So we have brought in our customer data, we created an expression, and finally we create a flat file so that uh, we can write all the customer data, all the modified data to this flat file. Now under the ports, I want to select this as a mapping flow, which means that all the ports from the previous transformation, that is expression transformation, are being brought in here into the target. So now let's bring all the ports from our expression to the input. So let's save this and run the mapping. So now you could see the values here, uh, the different string type values that we have modified, and also we have brought in the uh, date time double by including all remaining ports, and finally we have added our modified date as well. So the big
basic goal or the advantage here is that we might, this is a pretty straightforward map, but sometimes we might have multiple transformations in a mapping and you don't have to create every mapping or every transformation again and again. You can reuse the maplet, but you don't, you don't have to create a mapping for each source, each different source, but rather we can create one unique mapping and bring in any different source that we are uh, planning to write to the target or any different patterns of transformation. So we have seen our customer data. So let me quickly go back to my source and the data object. Now what I wanna do is I wanna edit my source and bring organization data. So within the same mapping, without having to create any other different transformation or any other uh, maplets or any other rules, I am just bringing different source into my generic source. So I have selected organization, let's hit okay. And now you could see all the data has changed. Previously we had different data, now I have the organization ID since I brought the organization data into my mapping. So let's save this and let's also run this mapping. And now you could see the different data that I ran by choosing the organization mapping. So we have seen uh, the basic goal, of the goal of this dynamic mapping, where you can accommodate changes to sources, targets, and transformation logic at runtime. You can just use this dynamic mapping if you want to manage any frequent schema or metadata changes, or if you want to reuse the mapping logic for many sources with different schemas, we can quickly use the dynamic mapping, create one generic, one single unique mapping, and use it for several sources. Over to you, Raj. Uh, thanks, thanks, Pooja. That was a great demo. Uh, thank you. So. Um, so the next uh, feature we are going to be covering is the uh, SQL to mapping uh, functionality. Uh, so this uh, and the dynamic mapping functionality are both part of uh, a power center productivity um, pack, uh, which is a licensed option that- uh, Raj, you need to share your screen. Power center. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, so uh, any of the Power Center customers uh, from version 10.0 can actually uh, uh, add this uh, particular uh, package to take advantage of these features. So looking into the uh, SQL to mapping functionality, uh, we uh, know that there's a lot of uh, uh, hand-coded SQL uh, which we use for integration and a lot of them actually we already use in our uh, SQL uh, overrides, and uh, so this actually prevents uh, us from fully taking advantage of the Power Center's metadata uh, functionality, and also uh, in uh, extension, uh, be able to look at the data lineage, uh, etc. So, to uh, what this functionality allows is, if you already have a SQL uh, that you are using to select for example, select data from a source which involves a lot of filters, joins, and uh, sort of SQL expressions, you can actually take this as an input and directly convert it into a maplet. So uh, this uh, functionality currently works with ANSI standard SQL. Uh, it currently supports select, and uh, we, in the roadmap, we will also uh, start supporting uh, the other uh, um, uh, DMO operations as well. Um, so I'm just uh, in this slide, uh, it, it is just to show that uh, from the SQL, this functionality interprets the join condition and it automatically adds uh, the source, different sources being joined as with the joiner transformation. And also it captures the filters. Uh, it also captures the 
different uh, group by conditions as aggregators with a group by class. And it also converts um, a lot of the SQL expressions into uh, expression transformation. Uh, it, it tries to translate some of the SQL uh, expressions or transformations into power center transformations. If uh, it is not translated, it will automatically be uh, made into an expression code which needs to be uh, further corrected before running the mapping. So, so one thing that uh, you would have noticed um, uh, you know, in the dynamic uh, mapping as well as in the SQL uh, to uh, mapping functionality is these functionalities are available as part of the Informatica developer uh, client. Informatica developer client is uh, always been available as part of your uh, power center installation. It is something uh, which actually already a lot of our customers who have been using data quality or data profiling, et cetera, were familiar with. And this is something that we see it as complements a lot of the functionality in power center. And, and also, this is a uh, 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 lot of the as you use Power Center for most of the standard data integration, data warehousing, data migration use cases, some of these newer uh, functionality, which involves dynamic schema, or uh, in this case, SQL to mapping, uh, will be in the uh, or in the developer tool. So now we will quickly turn over to uh, uh, Teja for uh, the demo. Thanks, Raj. Oh. Perfect. So let's um, quickly look at the new feature of our developer tool that is SQL to mapping. So again, I have a not really taking a scenario, but it's like a quick background that we are trying to solve the problem that most of our customers are concerned about, where they have handwritten SQL bad jobs, which requires significant manual effort and time to convert them into, into Informatica mappings. And on top of that, they need to have a SQL developer to understand the complex SQL logic, as well as a person um, to understand power center mappings. So let's see how we can take advantage of this SQL to mapping and translate, translate all the SQL queries and SQL overrides into power center mappings. So I am gonna create a new mapping from SQL query. So I can either give the SQL script or I can quickly give a file, which uh, an existing file, SQL file. So for today, I have taken a SQL logic. So let me paste it here. And another neat thing here, I can quickly validate the query then, then and there without, I mean, with, before even translating into the mapping. Okay. So let's hit next. So it generates the mapping. While it's doing that, I want to quickly highlight the points. In this query, I have taken uh, my line item as the source and joined it with a second table that is part table by giving the join condition. And we also have a lot of lines of wave clause and also finally summing it and calculating the revenue. So let's go back to our Designer, so it has given me the table name as well as the data source from the SQL query that I have pasted. You can even select the data source as a different source that if you want to choose a different source or if you want to change that current source, that can be done in this step. But it, it seems perfectly fine, so I'm going to hit finish.
So you could see I have two dis different sources that is line item, which is being joined with the part table that we have seen in the SQL query. So let me open this joiner transformation. And if you look at the condition, it's going to join by the part key. And we also have a filter transformation. We have seen a where clause in our query, which has a lot of conditions. So we have a filter transformation here in order to filter the data and get the required output. And finally, we have our aggregate transformation, where it is grouping it by a specific value and finally calculating and finally calculating the sum of, uh, by grouping it by the specific value, and finally writing it to the target. So the main aim here is I didn't have to know the SQL, you know, excuse me, SQL to understand what is happening. I did not really need a different person to convert these SQL mappings by, understand, uh, by understanding the SQL logic and converting them to power center mappings. But rather, within just a few clicks, I was able to copy and paste the SQL query and translate all the logic to my mappings. And another thing here I want to show is to export this into a power center. So let me quickly let me quickly export this mapping into power center so that I can use it in Power Center within, within different mappings or I can run it in Power Center. So let's hit next. I am going to select my version of Power Center that I'm using and choose the Power Center repository that I'm currently using. Provide the details to connect to the repository. and also provide some export settings if required, and hit finish. I have already exported it into Power Center, so let me quickly go back to my Power Center designer and show you the same mapping. So this is the same mapping that we have generated from the SQL query. The, I mean, it's which is not a huge SQL query, but it has like a joint condition and a lot of lines of where clause as well. So, we know that Power Center is not really intended to be used as, you know, overriding the SQL queries, but instead you can take advantage of SQL to mapping, convert any complex SQL logic into the mappings and export it to Power Center with just a few clicks. I have a question here. Sure. Yeah. So this will be able to handle all the complex queries also, just like a, in stuff like the analytical functions if you're using uh, any other complex stuff in the SQL. So it should be able to take care of everything or any limitations on this one. So we support most of the things, but something, uh, let me quickly check on that. We do have some limitations on that. Uh, if you could just give me one second, I'll check the limitations and provide you with the details. Yep. So while while uh, Tejasvini is uh, looking at the details, right, we have a few other questions that have come through. Uh, Raj, uh, do you want to do you want to take up those questions? Uh, please, Raj, <clears throat> I have a question on the dynamic mapping also. So I have a scenario like, uh, I'll give you one simple example, like if I have the relational tables for the source and the target board, and if uh, there are two additional columns are added, so without any uh, intervention, using the dynamic mapping, can we just map it through directly to the target, like without refreshing anything and without changing anything? Uh, 
Uh, Raj will be joining soon. I think there was a technical problem with his phone. Just give him a moment. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I was there. So, yeah, so hey, thanks, thanks for the question. So, I uh, I will address some basic questions that uh, around the developer tool uh, that a lot of a uh, lot of you had uh, before addressing the specific question around dynamic mapping. So, one thing that uh, I wanted to uh, kind of uh, reiterate on the uh, the developer tool um, is that uh, it is something which is available for every power center customer uh, who. Uh, has got even standard edition, so they can actually uh, use developer tool. They just need to uh, create a, a MRS and a data integration service. Um, so, um, and and um, and also um, another thing is that um, um, the other thing is that the. Uh, you know, you don't need the, the you know data quality uh, license to uh, use the developer tool. So that is uh, that is one thing. So uh, in order to use the dynamic mapping and the SQL to mapping functionality, uh, mm -hmm. on top of using the developer tool, you just need the Power Center productivity pack option. So then you can also use uh, the dynamic mapping and the uh, dynamic uh, uh, SQL to mapping functionality. So. <laughs> so that is, uh, I know that is something that I wanted to cover, and I think there are some uh, cloud customers as well here who are interested in knowing whether the dynamic mapping functionality, uh, the dynamic mapping functionality is uh, available uh, to uh, uh, to them. Uh, you know, this is uh, it, it's definitely not uh, very directly. You will be able to get that, but. Uh, you should be able to work with uh, your uh, account manager to uh, see if, uh, how you can include that as part of the whole uh, solution as a hybrid option that uh, you may want to uh, use. So that's uh, you, I will uh, recommend work with your account manager. So um, on um, uh, yeah, specific to the uh, question on uh, the dynamic. Uh, mapping uh, the technical question: uh, Should we, uh, you know, do we uh, can, can the dynamic mapping map or create the schema target schema itself? Uh, uh, is, is that possible? Uh, uh, I think uh, Tejas uh, te, te, I think that uh, it automatically adjusts the schema. That's part of the functionality, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. So I think uh, uh, that that's that's uh, kind of uh, um, you know supported. And uh, on the SQL to mapping functionality, the uh, does it support PL SQL? So currently we support uh, only the standard uh, ANSI SQL, which is uh, mainly uh, the uh, actually right now it is select, and then we will also support more of the um, other update delete. Etc. But currently, uh, it's it's kind of more on the uh, roadmap. Right. I was about to mention that we support nested subqueries, correlated subqueries, and some mathematical, financial, and encoding functions. But there are a few limitations on hierarchical queries and some other types. But yeah, as Raj mentioned, that that's in the roadmap. Yeah. And I think there, there's a question around: uh, Is this included as part of uh, Power Center um, a premium edition? Uh, this is uh, not included as part of this premium edition. It is uh, it is actually is an add-on package that could be added to any of the other options. The package name is uh, the productivity uh, pack. And uh, does dynamic mapping support work with database table uh, sources and targets? Yes. So it uh, it actually supports. Uh, uh, relational database table from the source and target files, uh, also uh, Hadoop, uh, HDFS, and uh, there, there's also uh, you know in the uh, roadmap to support uh, the uh, data warehouse appliances like uh, Teradata and Episa Greenplum uh, as well. So so that uh, that's also you know something that will make it uh, more uh, useful and. Uh, 
And I, I think uh, a lot of you have taken note of uh, the export uh, functionality that uh, Teja demonstrated. So the dynamic mapping actually does not generate uh, does not actually generate a mapping. So <coughs> there is uh, no co no concept of actually exporting the mapping generated mapping into Power Center. So it is always uh, a, a dynamic mapping, one single mapping, which in turn runs all the uh, tasks are in a in memory. So there is no physical mapping generated. So there is no uh, export to Power Center. But uh, the SQL to mapping. Uh, definitely, there is a mapping generated, so you, that you could actually uh, export uh, to uh, Power Center. Um, and um, the uh, again to reiterate, so these uh, two functionality are available only in the Informatica developer client, uh, not in the uh, our Power Center uh, designer uh, designer. Um, uh, but but then these are all licensed in such a way that uh, you know once you just uh, you get the uh, productivity pack you should be able to uh, use uh, the client tool which uh, always you had that installed as part of the standard client tools in power center so uh, you can actually uh, start using that in the uh, developer tool um, um, in a uh, so looking at a few more questions. Um, so yeah, this uh, this definitely this session is recorded. So we will be uh, you know sending this. Uh, the recording will be available. Um, and I think stored procedures. Uh, so again, uh, you know, this is uh, uh, support for stored procedures in uh, SQL to mapping. Uh, that's still kind of uh, uh, it, it is not supported right now. Stored procedures are not supported. So on the licensing side, uh, uh, so this. Using this functionality, you need the uh, PC uh, plus productivity pack, and it is independent of uh, the data quality. So even if you have data quality, uh, you know where you are using developer tool, uh, you will not uh, get that as part of data quality. Uh, this you will uh, you will have to get a PC10 plus the productivity pack. Uh, Uh, yep, a few more questions are coming in. So, uh, yeah, I think there are there are some. Um, uh, yeah, I think that that's a, one important question. I think uh, you know the, the dynamic mapping works only if source and target are of similar structure. So, definitely not because uh, even the source and target can be of different structures. Uh, since you have the ability to uh, uh, provide link rules uh, which which can be parameterized uh, and which also can be dynamic so your source and target actually can be uh, different and still you should be able to uh, use dynamic mapping I think uh, Teja, uh, Teja you can confirm uh, if that's the case right so still if the source and target of uh, different structure we should still be able to uh, parameterize the link rules to make it work I, I'm sorry, I missed the question. Raj, can you repeat? Yeah, one? yeah. So, yeah. So the source and target structures are different. Um, uh, in that case, can we still use uh, dynamic mapping? Right. You can always parameterize the source and uh, target. So, it, I mean, yeah, it, it should be fine. And you can parameterize yeah. the rules as well, like the transformation logic. So, it should work perfect. Yeah, so I think the, th thanks, uh, uh, Tejo, for confirming that. 
Um, and uh, I think there are, there are some questions on the performance. So does using dynamic mapping uh, bring down uh, the performance? Um, um, so the uh, all the jobs that uh, that we run from Power Center as well as that we run from the developer tool, they all uh, run on uh, based on how we, the nodes that you have configured. So the Power Center run jobs run on Power Center integration service. Uh, the data uh, sorry, the uh, dynamic mapping jobs run on data integration service, so DIS. So if they are uh, running on uh, separate nodes, there's no um, sort of uh, uh, conflict. Uh, if they are actually run on the same um, uh, node, then definitely uh, you need to take make sure that the CPU you have enough CPU for them to share. Um, so that is one thing. Um, um, uh, from a, uh, yeah, there there's some questions on um, support for change data capture, power exchange for change data capture sources on developer. So currently. Mm -hmm. Uh, in developer, uh, we uh, don't have support for the uh, Oracle change data capture or any of the mainframe change data capture. That's something um, which is on the uh, roadmap. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, the the dynamic uh, mapping functionality, uh, at least uh, at the current you know, state where it is, it, uh, as I mentioned, it doesn't generate the physical mapping. So uh, in terms of, um, uh, it, it is ideal for the MOS uh, ingestion use cases where uh, you really want the advantage of if there is some minor change, you really don't want a physical mapping to go and tweak, or you don't want thousands of mapping to be generated uh, because that kind of beats the purpose. Uh, so, so right now, that's the kind of uh, 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 kind of use case where uh, we are try we are kind of not generating the physical mapping. So, uh, maybe it's something on the roadmap that we can look at where uh, it, if it necessitates, then we can always take a look. But right now, we don't uh, generate the uh, uh, phys physical mappings. And. Uh, um, yeah, actually, uh, in in terms of uh, scheduling, there's a question on scheduling the uh, dynamic mapping um, as uh, as a bad job uh, over several uh, tables. Yes, so the uh, developer uh, tool also has a, a workflow, uh, man uh, you know, workflow functionality where you can actually schedule these uh, dynamic mappings, uh, so that uh, that you can al also integrate from within power centers workflow manager using a uh, command line. So there, there's ways to schedule it and also integrate it. Um, and, uh, uh, and again, um, I, I think, uh, yes, the, it does support flat file uh, as source uh, and target. And uh, it, I, I think a lot of, lot of us come from um, uh, power center back, uh, you know, using power center, um, and uh, you know that's definitely that's uh, you know we use for uh, all of our uh, standard uh, you know data migration, data uh, warehousing use cases. Uh, bulk of our jobs are uh, used there. Uh, so this uh, functionality. Uh, but this functionality is uh, available uh, uh, because of the uh, new paradigm, which is kind of uh, uh, in, in terms of handling dynamic uh, fields and dynamic uh, transformations, etc. So uh, we have kind of made it available uh, for uh, use through the uh, developer tool because the developer tool has got a lot of uh, uh, um, you know, newer ways to uh, consume and integrate. So uh, that's the kind of uh, what what we are s sort of uh, seeing that um, some of the new data sources like JSON or, um, you know, REST uh, uh, provider functionality. So a lot of these new things, we, we kind of find it easier to kind of uh, let the cons uh, customers consume it using the developer tool. So, 
So this, uh, both of these functionality, uh, uh, since there are uh, kind of uh, still a lot of questions on your mind, um, uh, are available through the developer client. So this developer client has always been uh, installed as part of your standard power center installation right from, I think, 9.5 uh, or even earlier. So you, you can actually just to uh, use the de developer plan, you just need to uh, you know, create a model repository service, and you don't need additional license for that, and you can just create a DAA service. And you can right now even run jobs uh, using that, uh, because any connectivity that you are licensed for in uh, in your standard power center client will always work in the developer client as well. So, so now, now, now you have an additional incentive to kind of uh, use this client because it's in a way it complements by way of these type of features, which you can, you know, this dynamic mapping and uh, the SQL to mapping, there you can uh, kind of argument the already uh, functionality that you're using in power center. That's a question. Um. So can we uh, can we integrate this dynamic mapping to the existing uh, flows? Like if we have existing jobs of the power center, so the same way, like for the same example, if something is changing dynamically in an existing workflows, so using this feature, can we just modify and continue the same flow? Like can we integrate so, into yeah. the existing mm -hmm. one? Yeah, yeah. So the way that uh, uh, currently that uh, you can integrate as part of the same flow is uh, we will create a job, a uh, mapping job in, uh, in developer, um, and we will test it. And then we actually there is a, a command line option available to trigger the developer job. So what we will do is in the Power Center workflow, we will create a command task and just invoke that uh, uh, wherever in the sequence of uh, jobs that you want this to be invoked, you can just, uh, using the uh, command task, uh, you can actually trigger the uh, dynamic uh, uh, mapping job. So it runs, completes, and then you can, uh, you know, you, you can go on with the regular flow. So uh, currently that's uh, available, and we are actually looking at, uh, um, uh, possibly adding more easy way to uh, integrate uh, in the future. Uh, hope hope that uh, kind of addresses your question. Uh, yeah. Raj, uh, thank you so much for taking up all those questions. I think we are almost at the top of the hour, and uh, we do. Uh, I just want to reiterate that this uh, webinar has been recorded, and we'll be sharing uh, the link in a separate email. And all the questions that were posted on the chat uh, will also be answered, and we'll post a blog on, on the Informatica Network support portal, uh, the link for which will be shared in the same email as well. So please look forward for, for an email in the, uh, in the next uh, couple of days uh, with, with all the details. So, Raj, uh, thank you so much uh, for the presentation, and uh, Sejitvini for the demo. Uh, thanks, everyone. Hey, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.